Hey everyone, thank you so much for clicking on this video and welcome to the first of the end of the year top 10 list. Not necessarily that the games came out in 2022, even though when I was looking at it, I'm quite surprised how many new games I actually have. So my number 10 pick is going to be Dice Throne, specifically the Marvel uh, Dice Throne. If you're not familiar with Dice Throne, it's kind of like a Yahtzee style battle. There are many, many characters. I have the Gunslinger versus Samurai, and then I also have Krampus versus Santa. Now this one was the Kickstarter exclusive, so as far as I'm aware of, this is not gonna be going retail. You could always buy the single set that comes like this, that'll, that'll look like this right here, and it's uh, two characters in here, so you can do like 1v1. There's also like the big chest that comes with all the players, and I really, really wanted that. So they have season one, season two, and then this one, and you're actually able to like mix them all up. Like I said, everybody has their own individual board with their own individual powers, depending on what dice combination that you roll. And just that you're basically just trying to beat off your other opponent by killing them. Marvel one definitely is my favorite. That one did come out in 2022. What well, came out this year as did uh, Santa vs. Krampus. I finally won with uh, Krampus, by the way. For the Marvel, I've only played Thor. I haven't played any of the other ones. It was Thor against Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch did beat my ass. But I really, really love it especially if you get like really into it because whenever I would throw a um, Munir I would like just chunk him at my opponent at Scarlet Witch and then when I was gonna recover him I was just kind of going like this and then my friend was all like what are you doing I'm like I'm calling Munir so number nine came out in 2018 and that is Quacks of Quedenburg. Now this is one that I just played for the first time this year at BGG. I've been hearing so many things about this game, but whenever I would see the playthroughs, it just never really called my attention. I was like, I don't know, it just, it, I don't I don't get it. But when I went to the con, um, I saw it at the library. I was like, okay, let's go ahead and play it. Let's learn it. And it is so, so much fun. Basically it is a like, bag builder, push your luck kind of deal. And oh, totally forgot. I was trying to be all cute and I forgot, pause this. So because we are still like movie related, you guys, we're gonna pair these up with a movie, all right? So of course, Marvel Dice Throne, Avengers movie. In this one, we're basically being quack doctors. We're basically trying to brew up the best kind of like potion or whatever. And we have to make sure we get all the right ingredients. And each ingredient that you get uh, activates certain power so you can go further and further up your little brew thing that you have. And you decide at what point you want to stop uh, before you explode. But this one, I couldn't really think about what game officially, to, uh, not what game, what movie to officially kind of pair it with because it's like you're a quack doctor. But then I went to the board with rats, right? And then you're brewing stuff, you're mixing potions. So I'm gonna pair this with Ratatouille because of the rats on the board <laughs> and you're like cooking. So my number eight is another movie that came out this year. Oh my God, not a movie. I'm so used to saying movie. It's another game that came out this year and it's a rolling right and that is Three Sisters. Uh, this is another one that I heard a lot of things about and I heard it was a little bit complex or whatever, so I was like, I don't know if I want to do it. This is like my second roll and write, I think. I'm really liking the roll and write, so I'm not going to lie to you. Even though I suck at dice rolling, I've only played this game solo. Uh, of course, the other two games that I've mentioned do need to have at least two players. So this is officially the first solo one. I do solo a lot because I don't have somebody who really wants to play games with me. It's not like too, too complicated, but there's stuff that I'm always with the roll books. That's always until I realize that a lot of the stuff that I need is actually on the board. Because here you're like, not farming, you're harvesting. Well, yeah. Farm, harvest, I'm trying to farm to harvest corn, corn, pumpkin, beans. That's what it is. And you have freaking farmer Edith who likes to get up in your way and like. Mm. Now this game, I will pair with. I will pair this with Babe. But if you're wanting something like more modern, not really to have in the background because it has subtitles on it, but it is about farming and stuff. It would be Minari. Moving on to my number seven, and I messed up, y'all. I totally messed up. If you guys are new, there's no structure here. I said the first one, the movie that I'm pairing that with was Avengers. That's not the movie I'm pairing that with. I'm gonna pair that with Fight Club. What we're pairing Avengers off with is Marvel United. It was between this and Marvel Champions because I really, really, really love Marvel Champions as well. But this one is so much easier to table. This one has really, really cute, like all the little miniatures and everything are really awesome. Three villains come in this, which is uh, the Red Skull, Ultron and Taskmaster. Oh, they're all right here. I'm like looking for them. Yeah, probably Stephanie, they're on top. I've played this solo and I've played this um, at two player, but basically you're trying to 
go in and, and defeat like the minions and and save the civilians that's what they're called the civilians and there's like little um, cards and each card has like a location and you're going in there and you're trying to do your certain actions and move around before you can even attempt to fight these little suckers over here you have to defeat a certain amount of the bad guys uh, after three heroes go then it's the villain's time to go and the villain of course is doing all kinds of like mean mean things moving around adding more bad guys adding more civilians it's a lot of fun you guys it's a lot of fun it goes really really fast and like i said i'm pairing this with the avenger movies any of them all of them um whichever one you wish oh you get the one that has um wait red skull i don't think the red skull is any of the avenger movies but like ultron and taskmaster masker <laughs> Live guys. Oh, I think he's in Black Widow, right? Not him. I don't know what the hell they had in Black Widow. But this guy. This good one right here. But number six is a Lost Ruins at Anarch. Oh, Lord. I kind of saw a little bit of shadow there. Oh, that's even worse. Oh, right here? I can't, I can't see. So in this game, you are an architect and you are over there digging up sites, discovering other sites and you're like journaling and you're, you're researching and you're going up this track. And then when you like discover a new site, then you know what comes up? A guardian. And he says like, why are you over here digging up things you're not supposed to dig up? We've been like covered up for millions of thousands of years. And here you are. You don't know what I have. I can have something bad. I'm just talking about like real world stuff. Because I know these are damn archaeologists. Scientists are always digging up shit. They're not supposed to dig up like these mummies. And like some sort of like new zombie. De Stop digging stuff up. Here, we're those people that are digging stuff up for like no damn good reason. Yep. You could defeat the, the guardians, the boss people. I can't remember what they're called. They're guardians. And then you know what? Then they're on your side. It's like you tame them. And you're like, boom, you're my bitch now. And then now they're doing stuff for you. But it's a lot, a lot of fun. It moves really, really quick. Um, it looks beautiful. It automatically already comes with some great, great resources like the rubies and the compass. No, the compasses are not that great, but the rubies, the tablets, and the arrowheads. What am I pairing this with? The obvious thing is going to be Indiana Jones, right? Right. But then there's also Tomb Raider. But you know what? I thought that would be a really, really good idea because of the guardians because of the evil spirit that you're kind of fighting something hear me out the mummy let's move on top five and that's gonna be arc nova this very beautiful cover the game itself i don't think it's as as beautiful as this cover right here i'm not gonna lie to you but here we are building a zoo this is the only zoo game that i have i've played this at three players and i've played it solo i love it solo Honestly, I feel like this is going to be a just solo game for me. But I would like to try it at two players because three players was a little bit too long. But then again, it was our first game. So that's also probably why it went so long. Everybody kind of has their player board with the same five cards. And it kind of goes in like a conveyor belt. And kind of depending on where the cards are, are at depends on what you're able to do within your actual zoo or even over here where you're trying to uh, partner up and do conservations and, and get sponsorships. The overall look of Ark Nova, I'm not fully, fully here for because I am like a packaging whore and I really love the, the cover for it, but I just, the, the look of the game, I'm not that fond of it, especially like the cards because there's like, that's the most impressive thing about this game is like the cards, it's like, whew, even when I play, I shuffle everything and I probably only put like half the cards on the player board and I don't even go through all of them. But uh, the cards are basically kind of like stock, like stock images and stuff. And I feel like it could have gone a little bit better with that. But of course, I'm going to be pairing Ark Nova with Rebata Zoo. Of course I am. So number four is Sagrada. This is another game that I just tried for the very first time. This is just a dice game. It's like a dice drafting game. We have a lot of beautiful, colorful dice. Just the packaging of this is beautiful. Like I said, I'm a big time packaging whore. Love it. And the inside of it, the look of individual player boards and the dice are absolutely great. So basically here, we're window crafting. So of course there's certain rules like you can have the same number right next to each other you can have the same color next to each other you have like a individual objective and then pop three public objectives and each public object objective is different like each horizontal line can have like the same repeated colors or each vertical line can have the same repeated colors or can have the same repeated numbers on each one and maybe you have to make certain patterns on certain deals it does get very very puzzly i've played this solo and i've played this at two player have i played it at three no, I played it solo and two player. They both played very, very well because there actually was 
a stained glass window that they were working on in this movie and that is the last song before we do get to my final three if you haven't already don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new let me know down below what was your top 10 games or your five or just your favorite game in general for 2022 moving on to Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. I do not have Mama Terraforming Mars. I only have Baby. And honestly, I don't think I want to get Mama. Like, I am really, really good with this. And I feel like there's still so much game that I haven't got to here. And I'm still trying to officially figure it out and really, really, like, tackle this that I'm I'm good with it. But basically here, we're trying to terraform Mars. We're trying to get plants, try to raise up the heat, raise up the temperature, raise up the oxygen level, and make it habitable for humankind because, you know, damn well these damn humans, us humans, fuck up this world, and we ain't got nowhere to live, and now we're trying to go somewhere else and then eventually tear that planet apart as well. So I like it because it's um like a card. It's a card builder, is that what it is called? I don't know, I really, really like having cards in my hand. Like, that's like one of my favorite things. I have played this game solo, and I have played it at two players, and it's another game that I really, really like solo. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. The first few times that I was playing this game, I was basically cheating, because I was like, how the hell am I gonna terraform this thing in like 10 rounds? I told, I'm like the worst at reading, for starters, so. <laughs> so technically I was cheating, but like I wasn't cheating because technically that's how many rounds I was supposed to go And I would always lose and I was like, oh my god, but I was I loved it so much Like I still enjoyed it cuz I'm like it was like I was determined to terraform Mars y'all I was determined and I'm like damn it. I can't do it. So then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna keep going like nobody shh, don't say nothing one of the last times that I played it and I was actually reading it And it says And it says to go that many rounds. That's what happens that's what happens when you don't read. Kids, make sure you read your shit. Everybody, read your stuff. Because sometimes you'll be missing important things. Because you're just like skimming through things. And then you like miss over certain things. Like how many rounds you're supposed to go. Even though you still go. But then you think you're cheating. But then low key you weren't cheating. I'm pairing this with Martian. But of course, we're in Mars. You got Matt Damon alone in Mars. Terraforming it. I low-key forgot I was gonna have honorable mentions. So these are just my top five like most played uh, favorite games that I have played only on uh, BGA because I don't have them and some of them I, I do kind of want to have in my collection like one of them only two of them I do I would like to have in my collection the other ones like I like them but I don't like them enough for the collection uh, but just in no particular order we have uh, Seven Wonders Architect. Uh, I do have Seven Wonders Duel. I've never played just Seven Wonders, but I out of the this one and Duel, I definitely like Architect the most. We have Parks, which yes, I have never played that game until here, and I'm I'm really digging it. Uh, Living Forest is another one that I do, like Parks that I want to buy to have in my collection. Draftosaurus, it's cute, um, drafting dinosaurs and stuff, but it's just one that I just want to play on BGA. And then Welcome To as well, which is another um, like Roll and Write, Flip and Write or whatever it is. And that's another one that I really, really enjoy. My top two games, honestly, you guys, they, they can they can vary. They can, they can, I'm debating on whether I want to flip them or not, but no, we're not gonna flip them. My number two is gonna be Wingspan. This is my second Elizabeth Harden uh, game. The other one was Mariposas, which actually was like the first modern day game, but that's not the one that really drew me into like the hobby but like i said packaging horror i love i love it's one of my favorite boxes just like my people that's actually my very fresh very favorite one honestly when i first saw this game i was like oh, it's another one that i'm like i don't know i actually won this one at bgg which i'm so happy because otherwise i would not have had this in my collection because i'm just like bird game like no like I'm really not into like really really cutesy like adorable games like I like pretty games and I love like anything like where I have to fight stuff kill things funny because I don't like like scary stuff but I like the scary games uh but I don't like cute games like ugh 
I, I just, I don't see the reply of Blancy in it. No offense. But I was just like, I don't know, like the birds and stuff. I don't know. And then when I would see the playthroughs, it looked kind of complicated. And oh my God, it's not complicated at all. But it's like you're building your engine with these beautiful, beautiful birds. So of course, it's a whole strategy of like playing your birds, buying food, laying eggs. And of course, you can't lay eggs until you have the birds. You have to get more cards to be able to play them. Depending on how many cards you have with like the brown powers on it, pretty much, you know, uh, walk your little cube back to the end of it and you're activating each individual card along the way, depending if they have powers or not. Another one that I play a lot of on BGA. I've been mentioning uh, BGA a lot. Uh, this is my handle right here. You guys can friend me who we can play on there. I'm always looking for people to play with. For those of you who may not be familiar or like are trying to get new to the hobby, this is a great, great place to try out games for free. Of course, you can always upgrade. I just actually upgraded, I think like last month, uh, to the subscription, but I've been on here for about a year and I've been playing free the whole time. Not sponsored because nobody knows who I am. This one I had a little hard time kind of debating because it's like birds, bird watching. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But ultimately, I went for the animated movie and that's going to be Angry Birds because there's different birds there with different abilities. I guess. <laughs> or like over here in Birdland and then there's the ice people when you go to Angry Birds 2. I actually like Angry Birds 2 more. It's just like, oh my God, it's so funny. Uh, but if you want to do something more like cutesy that might go a little bit more towards it, um, you can try the short Piper, which is on uh, Disney Plus. I love that short. It's like one of my favorite Disney shorts ever. But we have made it to the end. My favorite game of 2022. Well, the favorite game that I played in 2022 because it actually came out in 2021. And that's another beautiful game that I honestly never thought that I would love. Cascadia. Great game. Love it. I've played it solo. I've played it at two. I've played it at three. I love it at all of them. It's a follow up to Calico, which I have not played. And honestly, it doesn't really call my attention, but who knows? It might be another one like this one. And I did get Verdant or Verdant, whatever it is. The house plant one, I don't like that game. I'm, I'm about to sell it. I just don't like that that one, no matter what, at the end of the game, it's always gonna be, what is it, like a three by five? I guess you should car to at five. It's always going to look the same. This one, each time that you finish, because it is a tiling game, each time that you finish, the formation of your tiles look different. And that's one of my favorite things that once the game ends, just to kind of see what kind of form my little Cascadian area goes through. Basically, at the start of the game, you turn over a card for each of these animals. And each animal has something that they want in their life. The elk, some of them maybe want to be by themselves. Some of them may want to be like two. They want to be like a certain formation. Bears, maybe they want to be by themselves. Maybe, you know, they want to be like in a trio. Can't have more than three together. They have to be one over here. Um, eagles, you know, they don't want to be next to each other, but they want to be able to look at each other. It gets very, very puzzly such an easy game to table the longest thing that it takes is like when i'm playing solo or just generally when i'm playing with anybody just the tiles i have to set apart because you don't play with all the tiles it just depends on how many players there are and of course in the um roll book it tells you like how many to take out that's probably what's going to take the longest to be honest with you and it's so chill it's so relaxing it's one that i sometimes play at night right before i'm going to go to bed just because i want a quick little puzzly game these are my top 10 favorite games that I played in 2022. In 2023, I do plan to kind of do a little bit more game board content, hopefully fingers crossed, to kind of give me a little bit more chance to play games, especially at the beginning of the year, uh, just because I'm not going to be doing too, too much with my channel. So that just allows me to play even uh, more games there in the first uh, few months of 2023. All right, guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.